Zeke Miller is a CBSN political contributor and a White House reporter for the Associated Press, and he joins me now. Zeke, this is a high-stakes trip. What are the most important issues President Trump needs to hit on with these leaders in Asia? Well, obviously, uh, North Korea is sort of a national security perspective is what uh, the, the White House and the uh, national security officials say is the most important, most pressing issue for the president to take up. Same the situation there with North, Korea, North Korea's very advanced nuclear program, its mi ballistic mi missile development um, is not something that can be, uh, they, they, you know, there's no more uh, road, uh, road to kick the can down on is uh, something that uh, General McMaster has said a few times uh, now over the last few weeks. So that's, uh, th that's certainly a big item on the agenda. Also, this is the president's first trip to Asia since he canceled the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, that was negotiated under, under his predecessor. So the issues of, of trade uh, and, and economic issues more broadly will be discussed uh, in front and center for the president there. And then from a, you know, and, and then there will be all the other ancillary issues. You know, if he does uh, 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 have that one-to-one -one with uh, Vladimir Putin, all the issues from Russia will, you know, will again be injected in the conversation. And also the bilateral agreements and relationships relationships with uh, other countries like uh, like China, like Vietnam, uh, like Japan, South Korea, where the president has at times clashed with some of those leaders. How will the president sort of handle those relationships uh, in that context? We'll see all of that uh, over the next week and a half. Hey, as you know, Zeke, uh, there are so many State Department positions that remain unfilled right now, almost double digits, including some ambassadorships. Here's what the president had to say about that earlier. I don't need all the people that they want. You know, don't forget, I'm a business person, and I tell my people, well, you don't need to fill slots. Don't fill them. But we have some people that I'm not happy with their But Assistant process. Secretary of State, you're not getting rid all of that right, position. But let me tell you, the one that matters is me. I'm the only one that matters, because when it comes to it, that's what the policy is going to be. You've seen that. You've seen it strongly. The president may suggest that it only matters what he decides and what he does, and clearly, as the commander in chief, it does. But, Zeke, the ability to have undersecretaries of state, ambassadors in these diplomatic posts certainly allows the United States uh, a stronger footing when it comes to negotiations. So, how do these vacancies impact U.S. diplomacy abroad? Well, uh, I think this trip, in some ways, will be a, a real key test of that. So far, we've seen a lot of uh, you know, pomp and circumstance, a lot of sort of focus and emphasis on protocol, what the president is going to be doing, who he's going to be meeting with, and all of those things. But we haven't heard a lot about from the White House is the deliverables. Those are the things that, you know, in other presidencies, that, you know, sort of when all these trips happen, those don't get hashed out in the room. They're always hashed out in advance, uh, you know, by those pe the same people the president's saying he doesn't need. They're the people who draft the uh, the statement, the joint statements with, uh, with the foreign counterpart or at those summits um, negotiate what uh, you know whatever the American objective there is. So it'll be interesting to see a, a after each of these stops what deliverables the president has because if he doesn't have too many of them and the White now, right now the White House really isn't sort of hinting that there are going to be too many of them at all. Um, that is an indication that maybe he does need more help than uh, than he's letting on. So Zeke, what do you make of the president of the United States undermining his own Secretary of State? He's done it in the past. Uh, just recently, uh, he. When, was at, when he was asked about uh, Rex Tillerson staying on the job, he said, we'll see. How does that play into Tillerson's ability to negotiate with foreign counterparts? <laughs> No, it, it certainly doesn't help him, and uh, you know the, the, the broader issue that everyone in the uh, uh, in the U.S. government faces right now is that overseas, you know, uh, foreign leaders, diplomats don't really know how to read this president and this administration. They're looking at the tweets, they're looking at the public statements, uh, and and they're seeing one thing, and they're hearing a very different thing when they talk in private to people like Secretary Tillerson, Secretary Mattis, uh, Chairman Dunford, uh, General McMaster, and others in the administration who you know they, they, it's it's sort of a uh, 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 you know, good cop, bad cop is sort of the, the most generous way of reading that, or it's just a sign of disorganization. So it's it's hard. You know, so uh, you know, certainly Tillerson has been undercut by the president. Though you know, they try to claim, there's a sort of a push of uh, uh, here to sort of argue that there's some sort of broader strategy to that. We haven't again seen the deliverables there to say that you know this is a strategy that is working. Uh, but uh, you know, certainly there are a lot of questions that. Uh, foreign leaders and foreign diplomats have about this administration, about this White House, uh, about Secretary Tillerson and his effectiveness that, uh, you know, really, really don't have many answers to right now. Uh, Zeke, let me ask you about the possibility of something else. The president may meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin while abroad. Uh, certainly there are very important issues these two leaders need to address. Uh, and so this meeting, should it happen, would be important diplomatically, politically. But from the optics, Zeke, I wonder what it means for the optics and why hasn't anyone at the White House confirmed this meeting? 
You know, it, it's not un unusual when you have uh, uh, summits like this, you know, where they don't telegraph that there's going to be a pull aside or not. There's generally, generally what they call this a sort of pull aside or a quick uh, uh, bilateral on the side of a summit. Uh, that, that, that's not unusual. That happened in the Obama administration, happened in the Bush administration before, where these weren't always, you know, there was, the schedule is, is always kind of fluid uh, in, in, in these venues. But for the president, the optics are, you know, given the, uh, the, the Russia investigation, the domestic politics surrounding Russia here, um, it, it, it's an interesting moment for the president, not, you know, not to whether or not to take the meeting because it's the role of the president to sit down with foreign, foreign leaders. It's how he takes the meeting. How does he conduct himself? What does he say? What does he say about uh, Rush, uh, Russian interference in the 2016 election, which, which is very well documented now? We've seen all the Facebook ads. We've seen uh, uh, communications. We've seen uh, indictments and uh, and things like that. So what does the president say about all those things? Is he still uh, ref uh, reflexively defensive as he's been in the past on those issues? Um, or does he try to move past it and accomplish things on, on sort of a strategic basis with Vladimir Putin? That, that, that's one of the things we'll be looking for. Uh, Zeke, as you know, uh, here in the United States, Robert Mueller's special investigation uh, continues. The president has called it a disgrace. He's also been tweeting. He's been engaged in his back and forth with uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren. Uh, he's been talking about the Justice Department looking into Hillary Clinton and the Democrats. And at one point, Elizabeth Warren tweeted back to the president, you might think that your tweets are cute at real Donald Trump, but they won't stop Mueller's investigation or keep your people out of jail. The DNC shouldn't play favorites, but that's a whole lot different from illegally conspiring with Russia. The FBI knows the difference. Yeah, we've seen quite the tweet storm uh, from the president and from uh, some of his critics. Uh, um, today, um, as, he's, as he's going to Asia, tweeting from the plane on the way there uh, about a range of subjects. I mean, you know, the, the president all the way through this has been you know, pretty clear about how he's frustrated with the, the Mueller investigation. He's frustrated that Mueller was appointed to begin with after he fired Jim Comey, um, that, uh, you know, he believes that Democrats should be investigated as well for some sort of uh, uh, alleged crimes, or in this case, when it came to the uh, uh, the uh, coordination between the Hillary Clinton campaign and the Democratic National Committee, uh, something that, that even Donna Brazile, who was, who was the one sort of blowing the whistle on this and maybe even exaggerating those claims to sell her own book, but you know, she doesn't say it's criminal, she says it's potentially unethical. So uh, the president said the Department of Justice should investigate that. It seems to be a lot sort of just trying to sort of shift the conversation away from uh, his own uh, questions uh, with uh, Robert Mueller, uh, a little bit of uh, misdirection from the president. President there. But Zeke, to be fair, uh, and the president has surrogates out there raising this issue. Uh, in fact, Donna Brazil found proof that the 2016 Democratic primary was rigged in Secretary Clinton's favor. The president may be trying to change the narrative on the investigation, but there are surrogates of President Trump out there, including the president of the United States, who want Hillary Clinton investigated. They want the DNC investigated. And they've been banging the drum on this Uranium One deal and saying that you and I, the, main, the mainstream media, the liberal mainstream media, is not covering it. What do our viewers need to know about what Donna Brazil is suggesting, the Uranium One deal, and how it relates to the investigation or lack thereof of the Justice Department? Well, I mean, the top line in all of this really is how unusual and, and striking it is to see the president of the United States trying to, to direct from afar the investigations uh, of the Department of Justice and the, and the FBI. That's not how this is done, certainly not of political opponents. Um, there, there, there are processes in place, and the White House is, you know, you know will we'll say privately that the president's not trying to direct uh, uh, an investigation. He's not giving an order. He's just sort of voicing his own opinion. But, you know, those color, uh, you know, uh, decisions down, uh, down the chain of command often. So um, you know, that, that's sort of the top line. And then on, on those two specifics, what, what Donna Brazil is saying, you know, not, nothing there, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, even she says what, what, what was illegal. It may have been unethical. Certainly uh, Hillary Clinton was always the front runner in, in that primary. Um, Bernie Sanders at, at the time when, when, when that agreement was reached wasn't even a, a registered Democrat. Um, and then uh, in, 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 the, in the case of Uranium One, that's the sort of that, that's a, a deal that's been uh, under scrutiny by, by Congress, by uh, various other uh, you know, federal investigators for years. Nothing has come up about that that would indicate uh, criminal culpability or, or liability there. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, you know, it's one thing to call for investigation. The Congress is calling for, you know, say they want to hold committee hearings, but for the president to try to direct uh, law enforcement is a, it's, it's something very striking, and you know it, it's it's hard to it's, it's you know it's important not to lose sight of just how um, how big of a deviation that is from the norms. Well, the president is lamenting that fact, Zeke. As you know, he said in an interview, the saddest thing is because I'm president of the United States, I'm not supposed to be involved with the Justice Department, I'm not supposed to be involved with the FBI. Uh, for a lot of people, and clearly these were people who don't support President Trump's policies, they, to them that sounds like an authoritarian who wishes that they could control the courts and the justice system. 
Uh, th th that could be sort of how some people are taking it. Certainly, some of these norms and, uh, and procedures are put in place to prevent that sort of uh, abuse of power. Also, you know, it's the president. You know, is, is sometimes very candid in those interviews where he is sort of just reflecting, you know, lamenting, and how how he, how he used to have these freedoms outside the White House, and the White House is, but you know, to a certain extent, uh, constricting it. It, um, it. it limits what he's allowed to say and do. Uh, he, he, you know, maybe less so than than previous presidents. He's sort of testing those boundaries. But uh, there, there are things that he that he can't necessarily influence uh, from within the administration, and he's not always, uh, you know, sort of the quote unquote presidential type. But certainly, he has to be more presidential in the White House than he was on the campaign trail, or when he was a, a private citizen, when he can sort of make accusations, um, or, or or call for investigations willy nilly, and didn't actually have to uh, sort of back it up and have to, uh, you know sort of get you know feel the scrutiny that he does now as president. And lastly, Zeke, uh, the president this morning said he doesn't remember much from his March 2016 meeting with campaign foreign advisor. Uh, one advisor who was at that meeting was George Papadopoulos, who has pleaded guilty in the Mueller probe. Uh, he told the president he could help arrange a meeting between then candidate Trump and President Putin. What's the significance of this development and the president's response? Well, this meeting is now sort of the, at the center of, of the Mueller probe after Papadopoulos took uh, uh, I plead the, uh, pleaded guilty uh, um, earlier this month or earlier last month, I should say. Um, now, uh, sort of what the you know what the president's response to being offered to sort of have a, have that meeting brokered on his behalf to Vlad with Vladimir Putin. What came of it? Were other campaign officials uh, in contact with the Russians? Those, those are all the, the things that that Mueller is looking at, and the president saying he doesn't remember it um, is it, striking because it's not necessarily you know it's not a denial that this that this came up because also that account has been corroborated by other people in the room. It's also not you know the president saying he didn't nothing ever came of it. Uh, it's the president just going with the sort of the, the what, what, what lawyers may advise him to say just don't remember because that's the way you don't get yourself in trouble. Also of note there, the president uh, in the past has frequently bragged about his memory, so it is a, an interesting <laughs> contract. He, he, there. he does have one of the world's great memories. That's a paraphrase of what the president once said. Uh, Zeke Miller, as always, my friend, we thank you very much. Thank you.